project managers. What a, what, what a fascinating career, and uh, this is the first time uh, that I've had an opportunity to speak to your organizations and to your profession and, you know, doing some research uh, about this leading up to this. Uh, and what, a, what is a fascinating career that you have to take something, and it's so fluid and it's changing all the time, and you work with different people, and you have to take something and you have to create it and you have to plan it and you have to budget it. Uh, and you have to execute it, and you have to go through all the disciplines. And I'm thinking, this is just like parenting, you know? <laughs> yeah, only, you know, only without the tantrums. Well, <laughs> well, I act I actually, maybe, maybe it is parenting, isn't it? And I know this voice well. It was a voice that I grew up listening to as a child. I knew the voice very well. I grew up in poverty and parent alcoholism and lived on the streets when I was a child. Fascinating, right? I won't let my kids go to the end of the driveway. Fourteen years old, I was living on the streets. Amazing. Grade 10, as far as I went in high school. So I'm technically overqualified as a consultant, right? <laughs> this gentleman here, what's your name, sir? Simi. Simi. If, if he had said he doesn't like public speaking, how old are you, sir, if I don't mind me asking? 42. 42. Good looking guy for 42, right? <laughs> so when, when, when do you believe you started speaking? When you, do I believe when I when you started? One, two. One, two years old, right? So he's been at it for a while, <laughs> right? right? He's, been, he's pretty well rehearsed. Very bright man, very articulate, a very good speaker, right? Yet, because he has a fear of public speaking and a doubt, if I bring him up here and change his geography, I just impaired him. Isn't, you should find that fascinating. He's a tremendous speaker, but not in front of you. Why? Because the doubt just impaired his ability to do something that he's been doing really well for 40 years. So if we bring a doubt into a situation, chances are it won't turn out very well. Here's the question, right? Is it possible to take any doubt and turn it into a belief? Is it? Audience participation, are you still drinking the coffee? Yeah. <laughs> right? Right, so yeah, so if we take a doubt and turn it into a belief, how does it turn out? It turns out pretty well. If we think we can do this on our own, we can't. Right, relationships is everything. And it starts from the very beginning and just doing the one thing for people and every person on the face of this earth that they desire, that they yearn for. What's the number one most important topic that anyone on the face of the earth wants to discuss? Themselves, themselves right? <laughs> I, that's one of the fastest answers I ever get in a session. What's the number one topic I want to talk about? Me! I want to talk about me. Why? Because I want to show up. I don't want to be invisible. I want to matter, I want to belong. The final story is one of the voice. How do we shut it off? Right, true? If we identify a goal, find out what's necessary to achieve it, begin to invest in the activity, we don't stop anything as possible, right? If not for the voice. This story, one of the best philosophies I've ever heard, and it's the reason I'm here, and I didn't know it when I did it, John Stockdale was the highest ranking prisoner of war held here in the Hanoi Hilton in Vietnam. And the conditions in this facility were absolutely awful. Almost everyone that went in here came out in nothing but a box. They died. The conditions were horrible. But John Stockdale lived for eight years. Eight years, and they all, all the other guys died, and when he was the war was ended and the camp was liberated and he was brought back to the U.S. to heal. He was interviewed and the interviewer said, Mr. Stockdale, why do you think it was that all those other guys died and you lived and you lived for eight years? And John Stockdale said, well, he said, sir, that's, that's easy. They were the optimists. And the interviewer looked at him and he said, optimists? I mean, come on. Didn't you need to be optimistic to survive? And he said, yes, of course, but the other guys would say, hang in there, don't die. And they were at death's door every day. We'll be free by Christmas. And Christmas came and went. And they say, we'll be free by Easter. 
and the day came and the day went. Another guy would say, oh, I'm going to be home to kiss my boy on his 10th birthday. And the days came and the days went, and it broke their spirit so bad, they didn't have a bad day. They died. They lost their lives. And John Stockdale said, the moment I was captured, I made the decision in my mind that I didn't know how and I didn't know when, but I absolutely believed that one day I would be free. And that's what saved my life. And I know this is a tough group to convince of that. You live in a world of timelines. <laughs> Client comes to you and you say, I don't know how and I don't know when. Client says, who else can we call? <laughs> But I'm not talking about the execution of your job. I'm talking about the attachment to your passion.